post. I believe a few words about the new Eisenhower administration of interest to you. The goal for the post office department was clearly defined by President Eisenhower in his first State of the Union message when he said, with cooperation of the Congress and taking full advantage of its accumulated experience in postal affairs, the Postmaster General will institute a program directed at improving service while at the same time reducing costs and decreasing deficits. As you view this picture, may I suggest that it emphasizes that it is people, not machines, nor laws, nor buildings alone, that make any service great. The postal establishment has been noted over the years for the loyalty and dedication of its employees. That is why postal employees have always enjoyed confidence and the respect of their fellow Americans as they perform their important job of delivering the mail. Something important is happening here. Something very important. A letter is being born. A very critical letter, judging from the serious expression on young Bill Rawlins' face. You seem pretty young, Bill, to be facing a crisis. But there's urgency in the way you stamp that envelope. Yes, sir, that's a look of crisis, all right. We'll ascribe it to Crisis Bill that you overlooked something that could be a serious omission. More than 20 million pieces of mail wind up in dead letter offices every year, many of them because they have no return address. But the chances are your letter will reach its destination. Let's hope so. So there it goes, and the waiting period begins. While you're waiting, Bill, do you ever wonder by what devious paths your letter will travel to its destination? Do you have any idea of exactly what you'd see if you could follow that letter you just mailed? Take that pickup truck, for example, Bill. It's just one of the more than 17,000 motor vehicles owned by the Postal Service. And its driver is only one of over half a million postal employees, some 20 of whom will handle your letter before it reaches its destination. A large post office is a fabulous place, Bill. You'd see that from the beginning, from the beginning of journeys short and long for letters and parcels by the hundreds of thousands. Mail from letter boxes, from postal substations, from collection points all over the city. Mail by the truckload from individual shippers. Somewhere here is your letter, Bill Rawlins. It's 27 minutes since you dropped it in the corner box. Within two hours, it will have been processed and set on its way an infinitesimal fragment of the Postal Service's average daily volume of over 160 million pieces of mail. Infinitesimal, but so important a part. We're not forgetting that, Bill. But on this subject of volume, let's use an old, old saw and lay end to end the pieces of mail handled last year. Although each piece is handled at least 11 times, 
We'll count it only once at its point of origin. We'll lay them end to end and try to comprehend the fantastic fact that they make a belt long enough to encircle the Earth 280 times. And then we'll consider the weight of all the mail handled last year, counting each piece only once. And we'll marvel that it averages more than 80 pounds for every person in the United States. Did you get your 80 pounds of mail last year, Bill Rawlins? To handle such enormous volumes of mail naturally requires the use of a lot of mechanical devices and machines. But when you come right down to it, the Postal Service is essentially a story of people. Loyal people with busy hands. Busy hands doing routine jobs like facing mail for postmarking. Routine jobs that never get humdrum because they're important, especially important right now to you, Bill Rollins. Your letter, Bill, is still mixed up with thousands of others for various destinations, but not for long. Primary distribution is the first step in breaking down letter mail according to address. It's also proof positive that the pigeonhole is here to stay. Of course, postal people call them separations, not pigeonholes. Some of the separations are by individual states. Some by groups of states. Some even by cities, in which case no further breakdown is needed. But pigeonholes in themselves are trivial. What counts are the people who work them. A wrongly placed letter here would be caught later on, but it would be delayed just that much. And the post office is always working against time, against fatigue that means loss of time. So, old methods are giving way to new ones. New methods, Bill, where the pigeonholes are reduced to slots, where wrist action replaces the long arm stretch and a comfortable chair makes things even better. Ever see a letter turn a corner? Around this corner, down below, there's an automatic consolidation of the work of 25 people. In secondary distribution bill, you'd see pigeonholes again, where states are broken down into cities, and small towns grouped together according to the auto, that's railway post office, serving them. All that remains is to tie them up in bundles, then into the pouches, and they're ready to travel. If you were sending a larger piece of first-class letter or paper mail, you might see something like this. It's two hours, Bill, since you mailed your letter. A lot has happened in those two hours. A lot of people have had a hand in guiding your letter along its way to the railway post office, where all letters travel first class. By now, your letter would be in a so-called direct pouch, needing no further handling en route. But you'd want to go into the RPO car to look around just the same. You'd meet the postal transportation clerk, 
who'd explain that his job is to break down the RPO packages that were made up back in secondary distribution and to make up new direct packages for post offices along his route. You'd see more of those indispensable pigeonholes, separations rather, more racks of letter pouches waiting to be filled. Familiar sights in your discovery that the RPO is truly a post office on wheels, with its own unique method of pickup on the fly. Perhaps you'd hear about another kind of post office on wheels called the highway post office. Designed as a supplementary service for communities whose RPO service has been curtailed or cut off, as the railroads have turned more to through trains, stopping only at major cities. New developments to keep pace with changing times. Hours and miles later, Bill, you could pick up your letters path in the post office in hometown. You'd find that it again goes through a separation process, first by zone or substation, and then according to the carrier who will deliver it. The final separation would be done by the carrier. You'd remember Mr. Matthews, Bill. He's been a familiar face on your street for, well, as long as you can remember. You'd see how he arranges the mail for his route and the order in which he'll deliver it. And you might see his smile as he came to your important letter. Of course, it wouldn't be because he'd become accustomed to these important letters since you went away to college last year. Then, Bill, a few moments later, you discover something new in mail delivery that's being tried out in hometown. It would seem sort of funny at first, because you've just never seen Mr. Matthews in any aspect other than trudging along with his heavy mailbag slung over his shoulder. But you'd agree with him that this is a big improvement. You'd see another innovation in mail delivery, Bill, that's designed to relieve carriers of the heavy load of a full mailbag. Perhaps you'd wonder whether this idea was borrowed from the golf course or vice versa. But you wouldn't spend too much time wondering, because in a little while, the supreme moment would be at hand, Bill Rawlins. That important letter of yours would achieve the exalted moment upon which all depends. Anyway, Bill, that's what you'd see if you could follow your letter all the way. And then if everything went the way you hoped, the whole chain of events would start in again, with a return address this time, incidentally. Of course, Bill, you'd know all about the automatic mailing machine your dad would use in the hometown post office. But behind the scenes, there'd still be lots of interesting things that would be new to you. Things like pallet containers, a new concept in the handling and shipping of parcel post, using the latest in mechanical innovations to conserve space, to save muscle power. to minimize damage or loss in transit. You'd see the latest in mechanical innovations to speed up and improve the quality of your postal service. Label producing machines designed by post office people for post office work. For post office work like this printing of facing slips. And 
strip labels for pouches and sacks. Then there's the tachometer, another device that prepares facing slips for letter bundles five times as efficiently as by the old hand method. You'd see coins, literally tons of them, in every denomination. A bookkeeper's nightmare reduced to a simple mechanical operation by ingenious machines that not only sort and count the coins, but wrap them up in neat rolls for speedy handling. You'd see a mechanized payroll department bill from the entering of hours worked and pay earned to the writing of payroll checks. Even to signing those checks, more than a million of them a month. You'd want a rooftop view of the helicopter that speeds up airmail service between post office and airport, as well as between the main post office and suburban locations. you'd already know about airmail service, but you probably wouldn't realize that nearly a thousand United States post offices have direct airmail service over a system of air routes totaling some 160,000 miles. You'd learn about the Postal Inspection Service with its hundreds of highly trained experts in everything from business management to criminal detection. You discover that the accounting offices shepherd an average of over 50 millions of dollars every day in the year. And in all this story of people, there'd be a lot you hadn't seen, Bill. The carrier delivering to suburban homes, for instance. A unique combination of messenger, neighbor, and Santa Claus with Sears and Roebuck overtones. Modern day Pony Express riders of the new right-hand drive. There would be the modern garages where vast service operations are carried on to keep the postal vehicle fleet in action. These are postal people too, Bill. There would be the clerks, human encyclopedias of postal information. Postal people. Postal people, Bill. From the lady postmaster at the crossroads store to the postmaster general himself people attacking a stupendous job with a single purpose, to serve the public and to serve it well. To persist in a continuous search for new and improved methods suited to a changing world. This kind of vigorous progressive thinking, Bill, makes it a good bet that one of these times when you go to your school lockbox, you'll find a reply to that important letter you wrote a reply that won't be a disappointment. And perhaps, Bill Rollins, it might even occur to you that here is the biggest three cents worth you've ever had.